Just because your PSA test is elevated doesn't mean to say that you have a diagnosis of prostate cancer. It is true that we do the PSA blood test to try and screen for prostate cancer, but one of the challenges that we have using this test is that there are other reasons why the PSA can be increased. Hi, my name is Dr. Charles Chabert. I'm a urologist and director of the Prostate Clinic located on the Gold Coast in Australia. In the following video, I'd like to highlight for you some of the other common causes as to why a PSA test can actually be elevated. If you do get value from this video, please consider subscribing, like the video, and if you have any comments or if you'd like to share your experience with this test, please leave those comments uh, down below. Okay, so what can cause a high PSA? Well, let's start with BPH. BPH is benign prostatic hyperplasia. It is a condition that affects men with increasing frequency as we progress through life. In essence, that is the benign non-cancerous enlargement to the prostate. In essence, when we have more prostate cells, which happens with BPH, the prostate is bigger, but it also produces more PSA. I should say at this point that the PSA it stands for prostatic specific antigen. It's a chemical. It's found in a man's ejaculate fluid and small amounts are found in the bloodstream. As I've highlighted, we're gonna look at the conditions that increase the probability of having a higher PSA and BPH is one of those. The second possibility as to why you could have a high PSA is something called prostatitis. Prostatitis is a, a pretty ambiguous uh, umbrella type term to include infection or inflammation inside the prostate. So there are two key different types of prostatitis. One is acute and bacterial. Men can be very sick with high temperatures and the hallmark features of an infection. Those men can have a very high PSA. The other possibility is something called non-bacterial chronic prostatitis, where people, the main characteristic that those people have is ongoing perineal or suprapubic discomfort. They have pelvic pain that's associated with inflammation or irritation of their prostate. Both of these groups can have an elevated PSA. The third possible cause for why a man can have a high PSA is a urinary tract infection. Now, it's true that urinary tract infections in men are less common than they are in ladies, and in part that's because the urethra or the outlet pipe of the bladder in a man is far longer than it is in a female. As a result of that, it's harder for bacteria to gain access retrogradely, so bacteria heading back up the outlet pipe into the bladder. In men, as they progress through life, when their prostate grows, it can slow the flow and men empty their bladder less effectively. And it's this retention of urine that can promote a urinary tract infection. There are other causes, obviously, for why men can develop a urinary tract infection, but BPH is a common precipitant for that. Okay. The fourth cause for why men can have an elevated PSA is recent ejaculation. And so when men are coming to the prostate clinic for a review, we try and encourage those men to avoid ejaculation for around 48 hours or so prior to them doing the blood test. Now, the change that we can see in a PSA test with recent ejaculation is anywhere from around 5 to 10%. So that's something to be aware of, cognizant of, uh, before having the PSA test. Okay. We obviously do the PSA test to screen for prostate cancer. One of the challenges that we have is not all prostate cancers actually push the PSA test up. So some men with prostate cancer can actually have a false negative PSA, which means that their PSA falls within normal brackets, but they still have prostate cancer. Those men tend to have a more aggressive or poorly differentiated type of prostate cancer. In essence, what that means is that the cancer cells in more aggressive disease less resemble a normal prostate cell. And as a result of that, those cells, that cancer basically doesn't produce PSA. So although we can have false negative PSAs, still the cornerstone of how we go about a prostate cancer diagnosis 
is with a PSA test. Uh, as you would be aware from some of our other videos, the way that we screen beyond the PSA test to see if someone does have prostate cancer has evolved enormously over the last couple of decades. And now rather than having a blind biopsy, those men are then evaluated with an MRI scan to try and work out if there is a lesion in the prostate and if there is whereabouts it is. Now on the topic of a prostate biopsy, one of the challenges that we have is if someone's biopsy is negative, so they may have had a high PSA, a lesion uh, on an MRI scan, they have a biopsy, reassuringly that's negative. But if we're following those men up afterwards, the process itself of having a biopsy can actually result in a higher PSA. And if those men actually have BPH, so the benign prostatic enlargement, and they've had a biopsy, even if we check their PSA six or sometimes 12 months after the biopsy, that PSA test can be elevated. That can make the situation slightly confusing and challenging to manage because we're then not sure if the biopsy was falsely negative, meaning that the biopsy missed the spot, or if someone's increase, subsequent increase in the PSA after the biopsy is a byproduct of inflammation, which is produced from the process of doing the biopsy itself. Okay, another cause for an elevated PSA can be the DRE test. So that's the examination of the prostate. In essence, any anything that causes compression of the prostate, so perineal pressure, the perineum is that, that space uh, that exists between the back passage and the back of the scrotum, and if there's pressure there, uh, that can cause an increase in someone's PSA. Uh, along those same lines, another reason for PSA going up is if someone has had re recent casterization or recent surgery. And again, that's mediated through the same pathway in that if there is compression or irritation to the prostate. Obviously, if someone has required, required catheterization, either electively at the time of another operation, or if that man, for example, has gone into acute urinary retention and has been unable to pee, that process in combination with the placement of a catheter can result in that man having an elevated PSA. Cycling. Well, cycling, great for your cardiovascular health, great for your mental mental well-being, excellent sport to be involved in. The trade-off with cycling is perineal contact, perineal pressure. And if you've got perineal pressure, again, that can result in an elevated PSA. I've got a host of gentlemen that I look after at the prostate clinic that are cyclists, particularly road cyclists, and it's really not uncommon for those men to have a falsely elevated PSA meaning that their PSA is high, they have scans and other investigations, and no cancer is found. And so it's really the irritation and compression that comes from hours on a saddle that results in those men having a higher PSA value. Okay, so to, to summarize, as you can see, there are a variety of different reasons why a PSA test can go up. So it lacks specificity. There still, it is the best test that we have to try and start or initiate the process of prostate cancer screening. We need to be aware of the limitations of the test. And reassuringly, in contemporary screening practices, we now have the adjunct of using an MRI scan, which really refines who needs to take the next step to try and work out their prostate cancer risk and who can be reassured and, and monitored with surveillance. I hope you enjoyed the video and got value from it. Again, please leave some comments below if you'd like to share your experience. Until the next video, please take care of your prostate. <clears throat>